Hi, my friends. How are you today? I've heard you, and I know you're tired of spending money on art supplies. And so I want to show you another inexpensive product that you can use in your art. This time, we're going to ditch our paints and get creative using another amazing product that you might already have in your own house. So let's get started. I'm going to be working in one of my art journals. And since color is the last layer I usually add to my page, that product will be at the end. But trust me, it's worth the wait. And of course, I'm not only going to show you one product you can use. What's the fun in that? I will be showing you how to weave different products from around my house into my art journal. Because art journaling is like telling your own story through art. And I want to show you different ways to tell your story. In art journaling, you work in layers, and each layer interlaces to the one below. The first layer I'm adding is some old book pages. I'm ripping them and then gluing them to the page with some matte medium. I love using book pages in my artwork, because not only does it give great texture, but it has so much meaning for me as I love reading. I especially love stories, as you might have noticed. There's something magical about opening a book and reading a story. Each word has so much energy and meaning. And so incorporating that energy into my art makes it even more special. And instead of leaving an old book to collect dust on a shelf, I'm able to give it a new life. I find a way for it to tell a new story. The next layer I added is dried up tea bags. It might seem silly to save those tea bags, but it gives the background the perfect subtle texture. I love drinking tea, and I save the tea bags so I can incorporate them into my art. Once they're dry, I just open them up, throw the leaves, and keep the bags. The beauty of the tea bags is that they are translucent, so when I glue them, it adds the perfect layer to show the book pages underneath. It not only adds texture and color, but it uses something that otherwise would go in the trash. For my third texture layer, I cut an old doily that belonged to my grandmother. I was very close to my grandmother, and when she passed away a few years ago, I kept her sewing kit, some napkins, and some doilies, as I knew I would want to incorporate them into my art. Using something that belonged to someone I love helps me feel connected to them, even now after so many years. And every time I look at this page, I know that my grandmother's story is embedded in my story. Now it's time to add color. Yes, I know you've been waiting for this. I dried all the layers really well and then brought two different brewed teas to my table. In my last video, I said how much I love coffee, but in truth, I love tea even more. You might say I have a little addiction to loose leaf tea. The thing is that I feel I need both. Coffee gives me energy to start my day, but tea, tea soothes my soul and helps me relax. I love making myself a cup of tea in the late afternoon. And once that's brewed, I use another cup and let the tea bag sit for a while in hot water. The longer it sits, the stronger the color will be. It might not be drinkable anymore, but it's perfect to use instead of watercolor. For this project, I used two different types of teas, an Earl Grey and hibiscus flowers. I started with the Earl Grey because when you use it, it has a beautiful vintage feel to it. Who remembers as a kid dyeing papers in tea and then burning the edges to create antique looking scrolls? As a kid, I thought that was the most amazing thing. Today, I use it to do the same thing. I stain my papers and give them a vintage feel. The tea stains each layer differently, so you get so much more depth. The second tea I use is hibiscus. Hibiscus is a beautiful tropical flower and is commonly used in many teas. I added dried hibiscus flowers to hot water and brew them. I love drinking teas directly brewed from the source like green tea, lavender, or hibiscus. 
However, if you don't have the actual flour, I'm sure you'll find hibiscus in one of your teas as it's commonly used. So if you're a tea drinker, check the ingredients and brew yourself some tea with hibiscus flowers. The results really astounded me. I thought I would get reddish pink colors as that's the way it tints the water. However, when I added it to the page, some of the pink colors turned a beautiful purplish blue color. It was interesting as it stayed pink on the doily fabric, but turned purple on paper, whether it had gesso or not. I had to find out why. When I googled it, it said that some flowers change colors depending on the acidity of the pH of the object they're touching, which makes sense as the acidity of the paper is different than that of the fabric. To add some more texture, I added some circular tea stains using some old lids. I used both a large and a small lid to create different size stains. I don't throw away those lids either, of course. The coolest part, though, was when I took my Distress Flower foam stamp that I designed and used some of the hibiscus tea to stamp it as an embellishment. I stamped the flower, and when it dried, it had two tones to it, which looked so good when I glued it to the page, along with a phrase or one of my quote pages. I really feel that creating art with products that otherwise would have been thrown away in the garbage, but actually help us tell our stories, make our projects even more magical. I want to show you how I use coffee grounds in my art journal in this video to create amazing texture. The ideas in this video right here will help you continue using supplies that not only will save you money, but are readily available to you. And by enjoying your creative process, it can help you feel happier and can benefit your well-being. I'll meet you right there.